Hey, welcome to the channel. Um, Happy New Year. Happy 2019. I hope you're off to a thrilling 2019 after a couple of days. Um, I'm starting my 2019 off. Uh, tw- did I say 2019? I'm doing some, I'm doing dry January. I just heard about this, um, where you don't drink for the whole month of January. And so I'm drinking non-alcoholic, um, well-being, Intrepid Traveler Coffee Cream Brew. Cheers. Ah, it's good. So today I wanted to do a quick video, 10 minutes or less, promise, about uh, the firmware update for the Ursa Mini Pro that came out, pro- I don't even remember what day it was, It's it's or when it was, it's been like, it's been two months probably at least. So what it offered was a 3200 ISO option for the camera pre year. So prior to that, uh, the ISO range was 200, 400, 800, and 1600. And then, so this added a 3200 ISO range, and this was on top of an earlier firmware update that added the Blackmagic RAW codec. I put together a little scene um, to test kind of the the underexposed uh, scene, like kind of the low light capabilities, because um, as you probably know, the Ursa Mini Pro and uh, all the Ursa Ursa cameras um, aren't really well regarded for uh, low light uh, performance. So um, what that means is that you can't use like higher ISO values to boost exposure in underexposed scenes. Uh, You're much better off sticking with the low ISOs to get a clean image and then just dealing with a lot of underexposed areas in the scene. I shot in Blackmagic RAW, uh, constant quality three to one at ISO 200, ISO 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. And then the same thing with Apple ProRes 444 at 16, at 3216, 800, 400, and 200. And then over here, I've got the scene I was talking about where it was daylight. I don't have the raw files anymore. I think I deleted them. Um, So I just have a um one uh, video clip that i cut together uh, but they're all labeled with the different iso values so i just wanted to show you the differences um, between shooting in say iso 3200 in a well-lit scene versus shooting in iso 3200 in a dimly lit scene and what it means for uh, fixed pattern noise in particular so we'll just jump into this one this is the iso 3200 blackmagic raw and we can make it full screen and play and you can see all that nasty uh, vertical banding all throughout and like i said the highest ire value is really just hitting middle gray and that's really the only section of the image that doesn't have any banding in it if you want to shoot in a dim situation with this camera you really want to stick to anything you want to stick to isos 200 and 400 even iso 800 starts to get some fixed pattern noise. You might not be able to see it here, but if you you can see it, and let's um, let's zoom into 300% and go to, you can start to see it. And if we were to, so if we boost the exposure, you can start, you can, it really comes out there. So that's ISO 800. But if we do the same to ISO 400, it should stay a little bit cleaner. But you can even start seeing it there, but that's really boosting the exposure in the shadows a lot. So basically what this, what it means for this camera is you can't boost exposure in an underexposed scene with ISO in this camera, um, because you're going to get this. Um, Whereas in a well-lit scene, in a well-lit scene like this, You can use ISO 3200 and get a super clean image, even in dark areas. So we zoom in here to Um, you're still getting a really clean image. 
just to show you that there's no difference between the Black Magic Raw and the ProRes, it's actually worse on ProRes because um, I don't believe there's any sort of um, noise reduction or anything else going on in ProRes 444, but it looks like there might be in Black Magic Raw, but it's the difference is pretty negligible. So what if we tried to color grade this and try to get rid of it. So we can do it a couple different ways. We can go to the camera raw settings and change color space to Rec. 709, for instance, and then we could maybe do gamma extended video, um, which doesn't do anything. It looks, it looks really bad, but let's take those same settings and go to the ISO 400 image And it looks really good, super clean. I mean, like that's a really contrasty image because it's um, Rec. 709 and then extended video and then the use video black levels basically crushes the blacks. We can take that up and bring the shadows back a little bit, but still a super clean image. Um, if we zoom in here, Um, if we try it another way, maybe we just do, um, I don't know, we could just try to add just kind of like a basic curve, something like that, I don't know. And then maybe we'll throw a LUT on over here. Oh yeah, I can't do that. To bring that up. Still no luck in getting rid of that. We can try going about it a different way by just doing color space transform. You can input color space, say Rec. 709 to linear, Rec. 709, output black magic, output airy, Color space, input, black magic, input, airy, output, rec 709, rec 709. That doesn't do anything either. Let's try noise reduction. I don't really know what the best noise reduction settings would be to try to get rid of fixed pattern noise, but we can just try some stuff. That gets more rid of more of the noise like here and like really smooths out the image, but it does nothing for the fixed pattern noise. We can try this one. I don't know, just, I don't know, we <laughs> can just crank it. Once again, nothing for the fixed pattern noise. What am I on? This is uh, 800, 1600. Yeah, you can't use 1600. I wouldn't use 800 for seeing this dark either. I would stick to 200 and 400. So basically what it means is that this, this is what it looked like to my eye anyway. So long story short, they're not really event cameras, um, but I would still say it's a pretty good documentary camera. The form factor especially makes it a really good documentary camera. Um, but all that blah blah out of the way, um, I put together a scene that really the the highest exposure value is just really touching kind of that middle gray and then everything for, for the most part is, is underneath that. And um, there's the new firmware update didn't really do anything to improve the sensor's um, ability to perform in low light in high ISOs, there's still fixed pattern noise. That's just really, I really think that's it. So as you saw, as you guys saw from the footage, you get really clean ISO performance, high ISO performance in well-lit scenes. Whereas in an underexposed scene, you really can't use, I would say anything above ISO 400 with this camera. So that's really it. Nothing much more to it. Um, thanks for watching. Happy New Year. See you next time.